Putin wants control of Ukraine. President Zelensky stands in his way. And with danger all around, reports emerged the Americans had offered an evacuation. To which Mr. Zelensky replied, I need ammunition, not a ride. It's 2014, eight years before the Russian invasion, but the war for Ukraine's survival has already begun. Riots in the East broke out into a full-scale rebellion against the new pro-Western government known as the Donbass War, and it takes over a year of fighting before a fragile peace can be made, but it's not for long. Soon Russia will launch its own intervention, and Ukraine must find a way to hold off the Russian horde and preserve its sovereignty. Against all odds from the other side of the Dnipro, the seemingly impossible task of taking back Russian-occupied Ukrainian land lies ahead. Hi, I'm Colonel Cam, and welcome to 10 Years as Ukraine in Across the Dnipro. Hello guys and welcome to Across the Dnipro, a mod based on the Russian-Ukrainian war as you probably already guessed. Now really quickly before we get into the video, please like and subscribe. A lot of time and effort goes into these videos and I'd really appreciate it if you just did one of those things. Anyway, without further ado, let's get straight into 2014 with the Luhansk and Donetsk uprisings. Okay, I can neither confirm nor deny that this may be my second attempt to at <laughs> starting in 2014. I may or may not have lost the Donetsk and Luhansk war, but let's just ignore that because I had no idea what I was doing, all right? I literally, I didn't even know I guess I could rise up, okay? And they did, so that, that became a problem. But now I know what I'm doing, so it's okay. Anyway, we've got this protest in Kiev because, uh, what's his name? Y Yanukovych is a Putin's puppet. He's pro-Russian and the people in Kiev or in Western Ukraine essentially don't like that. And these protests aren't just your normal holding up signs and yelling. No, we've got a whole battle going on in Kiev. Protesters seize 11 Oblast state administrations. Uh oh. Look how many Russian troops are on our border. This is not supposed to happen until 2022. Hey, look at all the troops on the border, man. Fortunately, the battle for Kiev was won and Yanukovych fled to Russia. He just hopped on out of here. Yanukovych flees to Russia. Okay, this is good. Politics will change. And Ukraine completes focus. Protests in the streets. The revolution of dignity. Beautiful. Okay, so now this is the size of our focus tree. Consolidate the new government. We're gonna get a, a bunch of stuff here. 20% stability, hey, I'll take it. And out of seemingly nowhere, Putin seizes Crimea, okay? It's all gone. It's, we no longer have control of Sevastopol and whatever. But now, as one group of protests come to an end, another group of protests begin. Protests in the East. Since our seizure of power from Yanukovych and his goons, some in the East have begun to protest against what they see as a Western-backed, far-right takeover in the country. Activates mission, the problem in the East. And now this, is a, is a big problem for us because Donetsk, Luhansk, and a bunch of people are going to start, you know, rebelling. Now, this is a timer which counts down the number of days before the states rise up. Now, Donetsk and Luhansk are certain to rise up. However, there are two other states that could potentially rise up unless we do something about it. Those two states are Odessa and Kharkiv. Station troops in Kharkiv and Odessa to avoid these regions rising up. The states you need to place troops in and how many troops are needed can be seen through on-map decisions. Those damned Russians. Emboldened by their actions in Crimea, Russian troops have crossed the border and started to distribute arms to local militia groups. Remove 70 days. Suddenly I found myself with only 18 days before the Donbass war would begin, and I didn't even have troops in Kharkiv or Odessa. Before I messed that up, okay, I did not have any troops here. Odessa rose up and I got, I, I, I kind of I lost, it was too hard. But now, it should be easier, because Odessa won't rise up, and half of this won't rise up either. Okay. Okay, this is a lot better than last time. Okay, yeah, see, before I had all this rise up, and then I had, then I, had I kid you not, the entire, oh, the entire area here rise up as well. You know, I should have kept the footage. It would have been very funny to see it, but uh, no, I, I deleted it. So this is a lot better. Uh, we're at war with Luhansk and Donetsk, and we can play as them, but no, we want to stay as Ukraine. War in Donbass. And now we've got, look at this, the big focus tree here. President who? Timo Koshenko, or something like that, I don't know. Oh, of course. <laughs> Look at this video. Actually, I probably can't even show this. It's got guns in it. You guys can hear it. <laughs> I imagine this is what... This is the Hansk and Donetsk. <laughs> I imagine this is a video taken by them. I don't imagine there are any Ukrainian troops acting like this. Anyway, after that wonderful little video, it actually wasn't the whole republic. It was just a bunch of cities that rose up. So I had a few encirclements to clean up. While this war was going on, we had an election, which is uh, quite interesting. And we had two options. One of them is a pro-European oligarch. But this is historical, so... I only want to pick the historical decisions just because when I inevitably get invaded by Russia, it's going to be as accurate as possible. Anyway, Russia was sending volunteers to both of the states, and at this point, I swear there were more Russian divisions than Donetsk and Luhansk divisions. I swear to God. M17 shot down in the Donbass. 
I actually listened to a podcast about this plane crash uh, pretty recently. I'm pretty sure it was a flight coming from the Netherlands and it was going to like Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, it was. It literally says here, how can I, yeah. Malaysia Airlines was having a rough period around this time. It was literally, what, two years ago that Malaysia MH370 that went missing, literally went, just disappeared off the face of the planet, all right? <laughs> they were having a rough time. And this Donbass war is giving me a bit of a hard time, but it's not my fault because I cannot train or edit any of my divisions. I'll just see what we can do. Being on careful. Careful, I, I want to be careful not to get too many casualties. I was pushing into their territory pretty well, and I even managed to encircle some Russian divisions, so that's actually a win. By the end of 2014, an attempted peace deal called Minsk II would be made, and because it's called Minsk II, because the first one already failed. <laughs> So the peace agreement went ahead, and this time it was a lot more successful. We even kept the land that we had gained in the offensive too. However, this peace deal did not stop the border skirmishes that would continue all the way until 2022. Get in there! What are you doing? What are you doing? Just stay in there. You're gonna, you're gonna lose. Oh yeah, we, we beat that. We won that one. A much needed victory. Okay, so we net zero equipment. Look at all of this. Modify military spending. Oh yeah. Oh, here we go. At this point, I could finally edit and change my divisions, and all of the NATO countries were just giving me free stuff, like weapons and arms and all this good stuff. So now I had approximately six to seven years to prepare for the Russian invasion and build up an army that would be strong enough to hold them off. Servant of the people. Hey, there it is. There's Mr. Zelensky over here. I wish we had a president like that. Another comedic banger. We'll just click that one. All right, we'll do EU association agreement. Western drift. EU aspirations. And here on in, from 2016 to 2019 or 2020, I would be building my divisions from preparing defenses as best as I could to pre repel the Russian invasion. <laughs> 150,000 men is not gonna defeat the Russian onslaught. I'm gonna have to hide behind the Dnipro. Literally, there's no other option. Maybe that's why this mod is called Across the Dnipro, hey. We got our field hospitals, okay. We are putting them on the divisions, all right? I don't, I don't care what you say. The field hospitals are going on the divisions. The field hospitals are essential. We need to conserve as much manpower as possible because in the face of Russia, who have probably 10 times our population, they're gonna easily defeat us in a war of attrition. Hey, Hearts of Iron 4 has been released. What an interesting game. Hey, it's a very, very interesting game. I wonder if it'll take off. I wonder if, I wonder if I'll be playing that game. Yes. Thank you. Another 2,000. Dude, we're gonna be like fine on infantry equipment any time now. Apparently the oligarchs are very unhappy with me, but I don't really care about them either because we just made agreements with the West, okay? The West are going to give us so much stuff. I noticed I was struggling for supply on the Donetsk border, so I had to fix that real quick. Then I started designing these tanks, but these aren't going to be just any normal ones, okay? This is going to be tank destroyer tanks, okay? We're going to use tanks to destroy other tanks. I would love to build forts at the crossings. I just realized that would be so OP. What the heck is going on here? But imagine building forts at the crossings of the Dnieper, right? And so there I was, building Fort Knox at each point of crossing at the Dnieper. Nothing was going to get past, certainly no Russian. Then I realized we could make these professional infantry special forces divisions, and then I knew that would be what I would use to defend Kiev and the, the crossings of the Dnipro. Then I decided to build some forts around Kiev, because I knew the battle for Kiev was coming, and if we lost that, then the tragedy would happen. Vladimir Zelensky announces candidacy, a TV star running for president. Unheard of. Oh, hang on. I'm eating ice again. After the polls come to a close, uh, well, I think we know who we're going to choose. Ukraine completes focus, President Zelensky. There he is, servant of the people. Look at him. Why? Wow, he has so many good bonuses. Jeffrey Epstein got arrested and then died. But now my army is at a staggering 580,000. This is four times larger than it was at the start of this video when I did the Donbass War, and I was feeling a bit more confident. And then the horror. No, COVID-19 hit Europe. The lockdowns, no! Oh wow, that actually affects us quite a bit. Okay, we have an option here. 
Uh, we can go down all frontal defense or fortress cities. I'd rather do fortress city, man. I'm not gonna lie. I chose fortress cities because at all of the crossings in the Dnipro, there is a city. And if you can get bonuses for holding the cities, you also get bonuses for holding the crossings, meaning they're never gonna cross. Not in a million years. Sleepy Joe Biden became president of America, and so I knew war was arriving soon. However, I was unprepared for how early they would declare war on me. <laughs> Oh, look at this. I clicked on the... <laughs> look at this. What, what, what? No going around map. No going around map. I found a new country, guys. It's called No Going Around Map. How interesting. And then we got these Pandora Papers things. There's something about Zelensky and corruption. I don't know, man. But apparently his approval rating plummeted. And uh, yep, that's no good. Military build up by Russia. Yes, I remember this. I literally remember the Hoi 4 memes where it was like, Russia is justifying war goals <laughs> against your country. But like, at the, obviously at the time, we didn't know this, but it's so funny. This is the real, like, if I were to go by the real life front line that they've held currently, it's behind the Dnipro until about... Uh, where is it? Until about Zaporizhia. Anyway, I spent my time making a good defensive line or multiple defensive lines that I thought would hold the Russians or at least give them a lot of casualties. But there was also one more thing that I planned for. I planned to try and take back Crimea as quick as possible. I think I've set it up. I think I've set it up decently. Um... Oh, well, there's another border conflict. Why do they keep border conflict? That's so annoying. So I have multiple front lines. I've got the Donbass militias guarding the front, and then I've got my professional army holding a defensive line that is mostly behind the Dnipro, but also comes out and protects Kiev a bit. Then I have my main tank force, which I've stationed outside of Crimea to hopefully try and push through, but there's a lot of divisions there. But remember, my tanks aren't just infantry fighting tanks, they're also tank destroyers as well. And with that out the way, the inevitable war had begun. I'm worried about- there it is, the fight is here. Slava Ukraine. Alright, here we go, we will fight. The Russian invasion of Ukraine. I already read this at the start, but this hits. Let's pray. Just as I expected, my frontline militia divisions were getting absolutely decimated, but that's okay because by the time the Russians would reach my professional army, I was hoping that they would get worn out a bit. And then I made a huge mistake. I forgot that I had moved my tanks to defend Kiev and the Crimean border was completely open. Oops. Oh, I may have accidentally taken the- Oh, no, I did not just do that, man. But this was a blessing in disguise. There wasn't enough Russians to actually fill the front that they had made, and I was able to encircle some of them. Look how quickly the game runs, but look at this. We're actually going into Crimea. This is gonna work, okay? This is gonna work. Now my attention was fully focused on Crimea, okay? I just completely ignored the rest of the country. It's, don't look at the north, okay? Oh, hopefully our defense of Kiev stays strong. Should we go down to Sevastopol or should we just go try and take the land bridge? So I decided to go to Sevastopol just because I wanted to see the event. Oh, they're approaching Kiev. Where's the one that's like the battle for Kiev? Oh, I, I, I didn't I didn't know how, okay, when's, when's, okay, no, no, we're not doing that focus. We're gonna go down here. The fight is here. Political power gain, stability, division defense on core territory. Oh, why didn't I do this? Four days. I, I didn't see that. Okay, that's fine. There we go, the fight is here, the Battle of Kiev. We got a bunch of land forts, spawns several militia as well. Now it is imperative that we hold Kiev here because if we don't, Zelensky gets assassinated and then we lose the war. The liberation of Sevastopol. There it is. We got it, the Battle of Kiev is done. Uh, we got a bunch of militia divisions, so that's just 10 of these average. I guess I'll just add them to the front line. What can you do? Pretty much just taking Crimea. We, obviously there's a little bit here, but that's no issue, man. That's, this is gonna be like, we're gonna cross the land bridge. Watch this. We are officially in full control of Crimea. And if we can hold this for long enough, I'm pretty sure that this is an event where we can win. Mobilize the national, whoa. We just got 80 divisions. Okay. I mean, they're terrible, but okay. My divisions almost got encircled in Zaporizhia, so I had to save them with my tanks. We've taken so many casualties, and we're 50%. But we're 50%, that's fine. Taking back the north. Oh, how long do we get? For 60 days, and we take back the north. I was ready for the counterattack, and I even prepared to advance, and then something unexpected happened. What? Victory in the south. I didn't read it, I should have read it. Uh, I'm gonna put it back on screen. I think it's because we managed to hold Crimea. 
It says victory in the south, so I, be I think because we were able to hold Crimea, it counted as a win. I think I got really lucky with the encirclements I pulled off just before I entered Crimea, or something, or maybe the game was a bit bugged, I don't know, because they didn't hold Crimea very well. But guys, let me know if you want to see me do this on a higher level difficulty. I know there's the hard mode, and then there's the impossible mode. And now the impossible mode, I'm pretty tempted to give it a go starting from 2014, because I really think it could be done. Maybe I'm just being a bit too confident after this attempt, however, we joined NATO and uh, it was a Western victory. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I know this is a bit of a shorter one, but I've really tried to edit a lot more and just cut out a lot of irrelevant parts. This video would have been longer if obviously we had gone until like 2024, but that, don't worry about it. Look at this. We can send light arms to Ukraine. Let's send equipment to Ukraine. I think that would be a good idea, guys. That would really help against Russia if we send equipment to Ukraine. As a member of NATO, we can invest into Ukraine. I'm so glad we can do that. Okay, goodbye.